This story is Dragons Aren't Real, a short story for young adult readers set in the universe of Maidens of Zombie Kingdom by Jay Wilburn. The story blurb at the beginning, which is going to appear on my Patreon page later on. Princess Darn never expected to be a warrior trying to save her kingdom from a new undead threat, but it is up to her and her new friends to save everyone. If you like what you read, check out the Maidens of Zombie Kingdom Young Adult Fantasy Trilogy. Princess Darn, and we'll start now, it's uh, Dragons Aren't Real, so this is an, an edit. Um, Princess Darn and Heather stood over the track in the dirt that looked every bit like they would imagine a giant dragon's footprint appearing. Heather knelt beside it and felt the edges of the large reptilian print. What are you doing? Darn asked as she scanned the landscape in, in the setting sun, let's say in the light. in the light of the setting sun. All right, moving along. Heather said, the track is deep. Whatever left it would appear to be very heavy. Darn saw the edge of town where some of the burnt out, uh, let's say the edge of the village. Where some of the burnt out buildings were still within view, even from this distance in the dying light. She furrowed her bow brow. What do you mean by it appears to be, she asked. Well, Heather stood back up. A group of other female knights of the Order of Royal Daughters stood close to them, but silent. Heather continued, The depth would appear to suggest an animal of considerable weight, but these are things that don't add, there are things that don't add up. Like the fact that dragons aren't real, Darn asked. Heather smiled, but then said, I would have thought many things weren't real not that long ago, but we have seen and experienced much over recent days, haven't we? Darn nodded. This was what bothered her, too. So what are the inconsistencies? The edges of the track are a little too sharp. Heather pointed at the ground. Too crisp, too much like it was left on purpose to be found. Darn stepped around the sharp dragon print and stared across the fields. There are burnt buildings and carcasses of livestock. Also could be faked, Heather said. It also bothers me that there are no other tracks around, no torn ground, no felled trees, no piles of dragon scat, no signs that a beast this large had passed through other than this single perfect track. Uh, Darn glanced at the sky, at the to the darkening sky, it could have landed and flown away again. Some of the other knights peered skyward, but not Heather. Would be a tough thing to miss, a flying dragon, even from a distance. Darn finally said, we're here to patrol, so let's keep our eyes open for dragons or those who want us to believe in them. They found nothing that night, but more sheep were missing the next morning. Let's say on the far side of the village. The herdsmen were quite upset and demanded the kingdom do a better job of keeping them safe. The next night was quiet, but the third night brought another fire. The flame spread from a large barn into the surrounding crops. Darn and her knights arrived first uh, to help. Um, let's say... Uh, miles from where they had been patrolling all right other villagers arrived as well and they were able to stop the fire before it took out any other farms uh, the losses of property were still great the people cried out in fear and anger about the dragon none of them had seen except for the terrible destruction in its path we should leave we should leave Valahark, one man shouted. They can't keep us safe, but they still demand our taxes. You need to kill this dragon. We should leave the, we should leave the village. It isn't safe. There are other kingdoms farther away. Darn did her best to try to calm them, but it wasn't easy, with the stink of smoke still thick in the air after the fires. The knights were exhausted and no closer to solving this mystery than when they first arrived. Maybe we should search the caves further from the village or the hills and forests beyond that, Heather said. It is possible we are dealing with a real dragon. It's a careful beast, Darn said, one that seems to know our patrols. 
before the night begins and strikes where we are not. Heather took a small bite of her breakfast and chewed slowly. What are you thinking? I'm thinking a beast can operate by night, but it can't know the movements of creatures during the day as well. Uh, unless this dragon walks among us and the villagers unseen, then someone is learning about our whereabouts during the day and using that information at night. Heather wiped her hands and then her mouth. Are you thinking we feed some lies to our dragon and see if maybe we can catch him where he does not expect us? Darn smiled and explained what she was thinking. That day, they walked around the village asking if anyone had seen signs of the dragon. Of course, they all mentioned the fire the previous night. Darn and her knights took the angry comments of the frustrated villagers and then mentioned they would be patrolling to the west that night. Uh, as many villagers were finishing their suppers, the knights rode out of town to the west as they discussed. They passed the first few farms as the families were closing things down for the night. People scowled at them as they put away tools and took, up, took out weapons. It appeared the farmers were starting to patrol their own land for dragons. What would they do if they found one, Darn wondered. As they reached open ground, they cut to the north and circled wide around the village. They stayed off the roads to avoid being seen. As the night dragged on, it appeared there would be no dragon sightings on the eastern side of the village, let's say, either. If something did happen in the west after they said they'd be patrolling there, Darn feared they'd be run out of town for their failure. Then they spied movement near one of the fields. Darn, Heather, and others dismounted and made their way through the brush as they followed. Okay, and Darn, Heather, and the others dismounted and made their way through the brush as they followed the movement. All right. She wasn't clear on what she had seen, but she knew it was no dragon. A group of three figures broke from cover and crossed the fields toward a flock of sheep. Darn and the others remounted their horses and ran after. Let's say galloped after. All right. The flock startled and scattered. Shepherds lit lanterns and caught sight of three men running from the knights. Two of them were surrounded and surrendered. The third continued to run. Darn and Heather pursued on horseback. The man jumped on a horse of his own on the next trail, and he fled. The young knights followed close. A long, narrow shack. Well, I got shake, so that's not what that's supposed to be. A long, narrow shack came into view in a cluster of trees far from the village. One of the knights was still behind him, but the other was nowhere to be seen. Uh, he kicked open one of the doors and brought forth an old crossbow. Let me fix a spelling there. It was, a, it was in poor condition, but it had a bolt loaded and ready. He turned to fire as the knight closed the distance on his shack. The other missing knight wheeled around the corner of the structure at that point and kicked the crossbow aside as she passed. The bolt flew skyward with the twang and he fell backward. The sides of the building were so rotten that he crashed right through. Darn and Heather dismounted and ran in after him. A sword swung close to their heads, but they dodged in the blade, dodged the blade, and he broke through the wall with it. Um, broke through the wall with it. I don't need to say again here. That is unnecessary. I am going to put a comma after before the end, though. Break the two complete clauses. Heather took the opportunity to club him over the head and send him to the ground. Darn and Heather dragged him out in the moonlight. While he was still stunned, they took his dagger off of him and tied his hands. As Heather held the sword to him, Darn found a lantern and lantern, let's say, inside. And managed to light it. There was Okay, it's trying to make me say were. There was all sorts of junk. There were all sorts of junk. No, it's was. There was all sorts of junk inside the crumbling shack. Again, I misspelled shack. The piece that caught her attention most was a piece of forged 
Okay, was a um, creation of forged metal in the shape of a dragon's foot and claws. They got the man on his horse with his hands tied and then tied the heavy dragon's foot to his back. Together they rode back to the fields where the other two had other two men had been captured as well. The next morning found the men bound in the center of the village with the dragon track as evidence. There, let's say the iron, the iron dragon track. Let's say false. We'll just keep adding words to this sentence. Uh, with the false iron dragon track as evidence. Okay, there was much. Okay, there was much shouting and denial. The villagers knew these men. They did not have great reputations, but they were part of the village. Um, why did you do that? One of the old, one of the older women finally asked in tears. The man in the center, the one Darn and Heather had captured at the shack, said. We were farmers once. We lost our land and were trying to earn it back, but then the ghouls came. They destroyed everything, and the royal family left, left us to, left us on our own to rebuild. We are hunters now, and food is thin. We have no chance to rebuild what we had. If we scared the royal family into action, they would have to give us something. Darn wasn't pleased with how many people were nodding along. The kingdom was holding together by a thread. All right, let me just fix the spelling there. Heather shouted out, You weren't hurting the kingdom. You were hurting your neighbors. You took their property. You burned their land. They had to rebuild too. But you destroyed what they built, all because of your selfishness and jealousy. That turned the crowd. They were ready to tear the men apart. What will be done with them, your majesty? One of the village elders asked. The man with his hands bound laughed. They will put me up in the palace. Even their dungeons are nicer than where we lived and they will feed me well. The villagers grumbled, and the other two bound men started to chuckle. Heather and Darn exchanged a look. Darn said, let's call her Princess Darn. Remind people of her status. Princess Darn said, it is a long way back to the capital, and we have much work left to do protecting the villages from men like this. Perhaps your village can carry out the trial and deliver the proper punishment. Now the villagers smiled and the men showed fear. Put a comma there. All right, you can't do that, he said. I demand a royal trial. I demand it as a citizen of Valahark. You are a citizen of this village as well, Heather pointed out. You're not worthy of royal trial and the royal family is busy, Darn said. Several men stepped up and dragged the prisoners away. As the villagers followed, the elder said, We will handle this situation with the full measure of justice, Your Majesty. Thank you for solving this problem and for trusting us with the punishments. Send our well wishes to the new king. Darn nodded, I will do so, sir. As the knights rolled, r rode away from the village, Heather said, That is not going to go well for those bandits. Darn answered, Do you think I did the wrong thing? I believe they will get what they deserve, Your Majesty, Heather said. Let me capitalize her name. With her eyes fixed on the road ahead. After a moment, Darn said, The dungeons aren't nearly as nice as he thinks they are. Heather laughed and added, This way they get to stay with their friends. More adventures lay ahead. 